back. I'm so happy to see people face to face. I'm so happy to be part of this community and to be able to teach. It's an honor and a pleasure. I'm going to give you some ideas and things that I've been thinking about the last few years, especially trends I've been watching for a very long time. I'm sort of weirdly a collector of screenshots of search results pages, and I want to show you some of those now. Because my thesis here is sort of that the biggest trend in SEO has nothing to do with rankings. It really has nothing to do with rankings. The phrases and pages that I rank for are things that sometimes are durable for many years. But what does change a lot, what's changing every day, if you watch Mozcast, what you see changing every day, is the SERP features, what appears in search, the experience of the searcher. Here's an example of a screenshot, 10 blue links. Remember that? 10 blue links. This was just in 2019. 2019, later that year, people also ask, climbing to the top. Later that uh, 2020, wow, it's changed quite a bit. Here come some images popping up, images moving up higher. People also ask for the top. Yeah, you'd only see this if you were a nerd like me who collects screenshots of search results pages all the time. Whoa, what? Wait, what? Where are the links? Where are the pages? What's ranking? And then before you know it, right, it's the number one ranked page, number two, number three, pushed farther and farther down. Basically, the visual prominence, here comes the video, the visual prominence for tradi of traditional organic rankings is going down, right? The biggest trend in SEO is really much more about click-through rate than about rankings. That's my thesis, that's the point I'm making. And if you watch Mozcast, you'll see, they actually track. You can see the years in which these search results page features appeared, the percentage in which uh, search results page that they appear in now. People also ask, last I checked, it's actually higher than that, it's like more than 90%. Started in 2017, now 90% of search results pages have people also ask. Really, really interesting. So I'm gonna put them side by side for you here now. Ever seen this? Imagine this. 2016, 2022, you search for modern wedding dress, what appears? You used to be number one was only 240 pixels from the top of the, of the viewport, right? Now it's 500 pixels down, it's below the fold. And the number of images, talk about how much more visual search results pages have gotten. It used to be 12 pictures, now you can see 54, it's like a bridal magazine. What is going on? We need to adapt, we need to look closely at search results pages because you are not really researching a key phrase and coming up with strategy unless you've looked very closely at the SERP itself. Okay, this is also kind of interesting. I'm gonna put them side by side now. These reports literally show my ranking tracked over time in Moz, my click-through rate for that page over that same duration. I've got the red lines lined up, you can see it page by page, and then the traffic. Look at that. Right. Imagine, have you seen this before? Have you ever tracked them? Have you ever seen them together? The ranking basically holds steady. Click-through rate drops from 25 to 10 percent, and traffic goes from 400 a week to less than 100 per week. This is the reality. This is modern SEO. This is the situation that we're in, and this is the big, big trend, right? Ranking don't, rankings don't change as much as you might think, but the search, but the click-through rate because of search results page features changes a whole bunch. Therefore, the number one key phrase, the tool in the universe, to me, is Google itself. We must look very closely at search results pages before even deciding what strategy to employ. So I'm going to go with through with you now some different strategies that you might conclude make sense for various search results pages. Every key phrase is a competition, and different types of assets are different competitors. Every key phrase is a totally different competition. Videos. Again, massive changes in how search results, uh, the, the features in the SERP. 2013, card tricks. That's what it looked like in 2013. 2022, whoa, big carousel, <laughs> like looks totally different. You can see the evolution of this carousel from 2018, 2020, later in 2020, and then 20, uh, November, it's, they stack them up, makes perfect sense, Google, very smart, you can scale it now, you can, you can dominate the page with videos until we get to just one year ago, you see key moments. 10 different images just inside that little carousel, big change. So. You're considering targeting a key phrase. I'm gonna build a, I'm gonna create a piece of content, my audience keeps asking for it, I really need this thing. It's like, how to share access to Google Analytics. Let's make this page. I need this page, I'm gonna make this page, I'm gonna write this article. I, it's useful for my clients, right? I need this thing. How should I target that key phrase? I don't know until I have looked closely at the search results page, I saw all those videos, I need to make a video. Conclusion, that's the competition, there's the battlefield, I can see it, I need to make a video. Therefore, make the article and make the video. So now the article ranks, I, I'm not outranking Google. It's very hard to outrank Google for a Google-related phrase in Google.com. That's a lot of, <laughs> I'm competing with Google itself. But uh, I'm number 200 Google there, the article ranks and then the video ranks there. You see, my strategy changed depending on what I saw on the search results page. You've not researched a key phrase, you need a flexible strategy. So then, 
it's not just about making the video, but what else am I doing here? I'm trying to make the video stand out. Look at the color. The views from that, the view, the content itself performed pretty well. It's got, as you can see, it's got some amount of traffic. But I'm not just looking for traffic, I'm looking for visibility. Here's the analytics from YouTube Studio. You can see the visibility for the video. It's not rankings, it's about visibility. It's not traffic, that's not traffic, right? That's, that's, that's a visibility on another platform. So to get, make that happen though, I need to have a high click-through rate on my actual video, which means I have to have a YouTube custom thumbnail that draws attention and has high visual prominence, right? We just saw how Google's filling search results pages with, video, with, with images. I need my image to compete well in that context. How do I do that? I need to make a custom thumbnail that's simple, looks good at 140 pixels wide. <laughs> it's pretty dinky. I need to make a headline, give them a reason to click, embed the, the, the benefit into the video thumbnail itself. The face will, of course, grab attention. Faces are always visually prominent. Ever do an eye tracking study, you'll see that's true. And then a color, a bright contrasting color. I need to make a high click-through rate video thumbnail. Is that SEO? Yes, it is. Today, that's my job. <laughs> I'm an SEO, and today my job is to make a high click-through rate video thumbnail because my video is appearing in search results pages. Similarly, images, they're appearing all the time. Images, I'm gonna do this one from the other direction. I'm considering making a key phrase. I'm a content marketer, I'm an analytics guy, I'm measuring the performance of content, I'm gonna write an article, can I align with a key phrase? Content marketing performance, ooh, I don't think that's gonna work out for me. I think that's a bit out of reach. I think I need to consider another key phrase. So let's keep looking. How can I find another key phrase? Google, what does Google suggest? That's interesting, matrix. Wow, Google seems to think that people want a, a content performance matrix. I think I need to adapt my content for that. Is that a key phrase? Ah, that's within reach. I think I got a shot at this. I'm gonna go for it. But what does the search results page for that phrase look like? I am not done researching the key phrase till I've closely analyzed the battlefield. Stand above the battlefield. Take a look. What kind of competitor is going to work in this context? Okay, so now I can see what's actually ranking for that. Time out for a second. Here's the, worst, the world's least useful search results page feature. Half a, you considered half a billion pages and you showed me these in half a second. Has anyone ever used that for anything? Is it just me? Why do they keep showing us that? What's the point? Google, come on, nobody asked you, dude. I don't need to know how fast you gave me that search result. Okay, just a side rant. I'm gonna set that aside. I think it's weird. I just think it's weird they keep showing us that. Who, who uses, anyone use that? What? No. Okay, that, total tangent, moving, moving along. Okay, images are appearing because it's a matrix-related phrase. This video, this visitor wants a diagram, okay? So then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make a diagram. What's my diagram gonna look like? Well, it's got visual interest, it's like, Larry Kim, right? Everything you publish is either a donkey or a unicorn. Everything you publish gets good or bad results in traffic. Everything you publish gets good or bad results in engagement. Everything is either good or bad cheese, good or bad mousetrap. You know, you gotta, you know, your, your content performs in different ways, so I make this little two by two grid. Very useful, I recommend it. Take a look at that, it's gonna help you. How does it work? Well, it's got a keyword focused file name and title. It's got a, it's visually interesting, it's practical, it's colorful, I put the watermark, I'm trying to do a little branding. Publish this little guy, boom. There you go, there you go. I looked at the search results page before deciding how to attack this key phrase and then adapted my strategy based on that. Okay, there's not one Google anymore. It's not one thing. It's not just about rankings. It's not just about traffic. It's about visibility. It's about visibility. So I know that Moz shows this and I love seeing that and I think that's interesting, but that's not the only game. Right, the organic click-through rate. You can just watch that number fall over year after year, but we have to, that's, that, that we're not limited to that, organic click-through rate. It's more than just traditional organic search. Okay, directories. Key phrase that's near and dear to me, Chicago web design. I need to rank for this phrase, right? That's what my audience is doing. I need to opt, here's another way to think about it. I'm just not optimizing content for search. I'm optimizing for the searcher's experience. See, the searcher searches for this phrase. They, they see what? They click on what? There's a directory that ranks number one. Now my game, right, is this SEO today? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. My job today as an SEO is to appear within this directory, to appear within that directory. In this case, the directory is a combination of, um, it's like a paid thing combined with reviews or something. I've got to figure that out. I've got to become visible there. Is that worth it? Absolutely. I can see in analytics, I can just look at the referral traffic from that directory. I can see if it's generating leads. I can evaluate whether or not that, that directory submission or promotion or sponsorship is worth the money. Right? So is, is that traffic? Is that visibility? What am I doing? That's SEO. Today, that's SEO, directory submissions. 
Why do directories rank so high? It's because they satisfy the, for the visitor's intent so well. What is the intent of the visitor who searches for that phrase? It's to consider for many different options, right? If you put this one into Moz, you're going to look and you're going to say, weird, that page doesn't have the highest page authority. Weird, that page doesn't have the, high, the best relevance, the highest content score. Why would it rank so high? The reason is user interaction signals. It's solving for the visitor's intent. The visitor who searches for that phrase and lands on that page is very satisfied. They're very happy, right? Because of the long, the long click, dwell time. Think about it. Visitor searches. Visitor sees search results page. Visitor clicks. Visitor lands. Visitor vomits and hits the back button. Low dwell time. Poor user interaction signals. Not a, not, a, not a great page. Visitor scrolls down. Visitor clicks again. Visitor spends five long minutes on that page. Loves it and then hits the back button. Those are both bounces. But one of those bounces has a much better user interaction signal for the search engine. One of those bounces is sending high dwell time, right? This is a, this is a, a signal for Google that it's a useful page, which is why, that helps explain why, directories perform so well, even when the other traditional expected search ranking factors are not that strong. Think about this. this is, there's a lot on this tiny slide. I want you to, to try to enter. This, this is important, I think. Google favors directories over service providers. That's why. Google favors merchants, uh, marketplaces over merchants. That's why. So what is your job as an SEO? It's to play in that game. Because you're not just optimizing for the key phrase, for the page. You're not just you know, improving the relevance of a piece of content. You're optimizing for the experience of the searcher from where they start. There's a true story in the life of every person on every web page. Where did they start? What are they looking for? What do they land on? That's the game you're, you have to play today. Surpass big blogs. There's some key phrases. This was a conversation with Hannah from last night. She's here. Yes, we just talked about this, right? You were telling me about this key phrase. Vacuum cleaner company. Want to rank for best vacuum cleaner? What ranks for best vacuum cleaner? There are no vacuum cleaner companies that rank for that. There are only media sites that rank for that. So you're an SEO. What's your job today? Digital PR. You have no other access to a visibility within this search results page for this critical key phrase, right? Very valuable key phrase, unless you're playing that game today. That's why forever... My strategy will include guest blogging, pitching, digital PR, submission. You get the idea. OK, another example. Visitor searches. Visitor sees a client, true story, client wants to rank for private dining Chicago. Private dining Chicago. What ranks for private dining Chicago? Association, Yelp, blogs, aggregators, blogs. There's not one restaurant that ranks for that key phrase. So I'm looking at this closely with my client, looking at it closely, and what do we see? Hey, that's a travel association. Hey, we're part of that travel association. What's my job as an SEO today? It's to look closely at that page, think about the visitor's experience, and in this case, we need to call up that association and have them include us at the top. There it is. There's my client. They appear at the top. The results, you get the idea. Is that SEO? Yes, it is. <laughs> Today, that's my job as an SEO, is to reach out to the association that my client's a member of and to tell them that we should be more visible than that other company that's not even a member. You get the idea. Big, big difference. Here's another one that I think of. It's a giant shortcut. It's a possible opportunity. It depends. But does, this, does the search results page include user-generated content websites? Quora, Reddit, Stack Overflow. True story. Three years ago now, it's sad. It was so long. Three years ago, 2019, I was standing on this stage. There's a picture of me standing on this stage, picture taken from right over there. I'm at a conference. There's a ton of super smart people here. I'm not leaving this place without making something. I'm, a, I'm an opportunistic content marketer. I'm on an interview. I'm going to talk to some of the other speakers and get their feedback. So I'm going to create a piece of content from my experience here. By the way, I recommend that all of you do this before you leave. Some of the best opportunities you're going to have are actually sitting next to you in this room. So I reached out to, I, I started talking to them, and I started interviewing people in that room right over there. I held up my laptop. I had a lav mic. Hey, Ross, would you answer this question? What do you love about content and search? I asked each speaker three questions. Okay? So one of the questions I asked was, will SEO ever die? Do I have a chance to become visible for this phrase, will SEO ever die? Is there an opportunity there? Do I have a chance at that? What's ranking for that? Oh, Quora is ranking for that key phrase. Yes, I do have an opportunity. Because if Quora ranks for the key phrase, if the Quora question ranks for the key phrase, and if my answer ranks for the Quora question, now I rank for the key phrase. Do you see that? Shortcut. It's like barnacle SEO. You can do this. My 
my answer ranks for the question, the question ranks for the key phrase. This, by the way, is something you could do from the other direction. Just put one of these user-generated content websites into a rank tracking tool, and it will show you all the phrases that that site ranks for. These are the questions that you should go answer on that website. Make sense? I just reverse engineered a ton of visibility by seeing all the phrases for which Quora ranks. Just, just add up votes, instant ranking, instant visibility. Get the idea? I went backwards. I found all the phrases for which Quora ranks, and those are the questions on which I can be active. OK, this one here, fascinating to me. I pay a lot of attention to this. I'm always trying to understand the intent of visitors by using Google to see what appears in search results. And sometimes it's a mix. It's not clear. It's a mix. You search for lead generation web design. Google doesn't seem to know what this visitor wants. Does this visitor want an article? Does this visitor want a service provider? It's ambiguous. It's an ambiguous intent free phrase. The SERP is clearly trying to answer both for commercial intent and for information intent. It's kind of interesting, right? These, if you clicked on these, these pages would solve for various types of intent. So how do we target ambiguous intent key phrase? This is actually kind of the, the, the key to search and the key to digital in general is that every, everyone at every moment in their life has one of two types of intent. You have commercial intent or information intent. You search for either a dollar sign or a key for it, or a question mark. That's how I think of commercial information and commercial and information intent. And you land on one of two types of pages, a sales page or, a, or an article, right? This explains a ton about digital marketing. Everything that we make is either satisfying for one of these two types of intent. There's two kinds of visitors with two kinds of intent, searching for two kinds of key phrases, landing on two kinds of pages, and then converting in two different ways, right? So this page is a mix of dollar signs and question marks. It's a mix of dollar signs and question marks. So how do we target this phrase? Well, if you're making a service page, I it's not different algorithms, it's still Google. I recommend including some of the people also ask questions, answers to those things on your service page. Why not? Google seems to be thinking that that's questions this visitor might have. Another thing, EAT, Lily's right here. Let's put EAT on that page, right? Look at how well Joanne does it, right? Joanna Weeb from Copy Hackers. Beautiful, right? She's got three phases at the top of every article. You can imagine how that just builds support, how that adds credibility. Finally, this is a, I could make so much money. For, this is not a client. Any of us could make a ton of money for this client in about five minutes. If you search for this chemical, you might want the chemical, chemical formula, the structure, but this company sells that chemical. They're, they're like a laboratory supply company. But you can't tell from the title tag that they're actually selling the product. If you just put the word buy at the beginning of that title tag, the commercial intent visitor would immediately see that and click and land and they'd have, you know, help the commercial intent visitor filter out all of the information from commercial intent pages, the easy opportunity. So these are three ways that you can uh, optimize for an ambiguous intent phrase on a sales page. What about for the, what about for the, 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 in, the article? This is a page about recovery from amphetamine addiction. This is like an important page. It's an article, basically. But one thing they did very, very well is to make sure it was filled with calls to action. Make sure that if you write an article, and that article is on a, targeting an a, ambiguous intent key phrase, make sure that you've got lots of calls to action on it. Another obvious opportunity, oh, <laughs> hold on. There's a true story in the life of every visitor to every web page, as I said. This is a therapy website. This is an ADHD page. What's the true story in the life of this visitor? They've got a short attention span. So let's give them 65 other things they might want to click on, right? That's, a, that's, that's not a joke slide. That's an actual website, right? It's like a, I, I'm imagining a site for like a hypochondriac. Diseases you might also have. Like, that'd be terrible. <laughs> what, what are they thinking, right? Just think of it that way. Just always remember that. There's a true story in the life of every visitor to every web page. What do we know about that person? Well, they clicked on this. Therefore, we know that. Another thing, middle of funnel content, the content upgrade or lead magnet is an awesome thing to add to an ambiguous intent article, right? This is an article about solar, the page about solar simulation. That, that button cranks. It gets tons, it gathers tons of email addresses because the visitor who has ambiguous intent might be ready, right? That's where the middle of funnel content, that's where the content upgrade, you know, the, the, the gated piece works really, really well. And then finally, surround that article, right? You've got a chance, write for other websites. There, there, are pages, there are phrases you can search for where I wrote a lot of the articles in the search results page, right? There's no reason you can't write for other websites. So these are my, uh, my tips for targeting ambiguous intent key phrase, regardless of the type of, of content you're creating. It's one of the, it's not discussed that much, but I think it's really effective to just attack these things differently. Without, whatever you're creating, you can kind of borrow the best tricks from the other type of page.
And then, by the way, you're not done writing it if you just, writing it and publishing it is often insufficient. If I'm serious about a key phrase, here's one I've been tracking for years, lead generation website, I write that article every couple years. <laughs> I'm not done. If you didn't, if you're not ranking yet for a key phrase, maybe it's because you only wrote it once. If you're not ranking for a key phrase, maybe it's because you only wrote it once. Look at the evolution of this page. This is not, it, it's not over yet. It's called search engine optimization. It's not a one-time thing. We're supposed to be in there, keep improving it, right? New content comes out all the time. The durability of a search ranking is a function of how much new stuff comes out on that topic. Therefore, you, if there's a lot of new stuff coming out, your, the relative value of yours is going to erode over time. We must keep publishing, keep improving. You know, and I, and I, that, that's a phrase I've worked very hard on for many years, and I'm actually pretty happy with my number 10 ranking, 10 million pixels down from the top of the page. That's not too bad for that quite valuable phrase. So seriously, if, if, if you only wrote it once, you're not a serious player in that game yet, for, depending on the relative competition for the phrase. By the way, my advice, I mentioned this once before, my advice for this, if, if, once you realize that you're going to be updating your content later, you, you learn the value of, of creating URLs that are easily adapted and recycled. So never put a number in a URL. Why would you? If I rewrote that article later and it's now 15 best practices is a mismatch between my URL and the title, right? Never put a format in a URL. Why not? Because if I update that content later and change it into a different format, there's a mismatch between the URL and the format of my content. URLs should have no formats and no numbers. Use URL, you can make it anything you want, right? Use URLs that are easy to reuse later on. Optimizing for the, vis for the searcher's experience, sometimes they search and they see a lot of stars. It's like a constellation. Look at all the stars on this. Boom, 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 stars, stars, stars. If this doesn't work out for this company, it, by the way, if this prevents people from clicking, you're not going to see that anywhere. That doesn't show up in your analytics. That doesn't show up, uh, you're not going to see that in any, any report. <laughs> Reputation problems don't show up in any reports, do they? The person just doesn't click. In fact, what the person might do is actually, and, and look, these are really bad. I tried to fuzz out the name. I shouldn't be protecting these people. Who cares? They must be bad at their, it doesn't matter. It's not a client. So if this, if this comes up a lot, what does the visitor then do? The refined search is a disaster. They're looking for complaints. This searcher is now looking for trouble. How does that show up in your analytics? Just less traffic. Just lower traffic. There's no, there's no report that shows that, you're, you're get, you know, that the click-through rate for your navigational query went down. Who's watching? No one's watching that. So your job now is to improve the reputation. I'm an SEO. Is that my job today? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's what search for me is today because that's what the visitor is seeing. How do you do that? First of all, do a little soul searching. Let's read those. Let's get better. Let's do a better job uh, at, at, our, you know, at our service today. Also, reach out. Get some super fans to write you a review. You can use tools as tools for reputation management. I'm, not, I'm an affiliate of nothing, so I don't know what those tools are. And by the way, if you're gathering feedback as part of your normal job, if you're trying to calculate your net promoter score, then you would always have an opportunity to get better reviews because you're going to meet those people right in that moment at their peak interest, right when they're super happy, right? So... Uh, Steal this if it's useful. You're obviously getting all these slides. This is a template that you can use after you've gotten good feedback to someone. Keep it in your good file, right? Someone sends you a happy email. You're an SEO. That's your next thought. That's what I'm doing today. This is my job today, is to you, is turn that happy client's feedback into a star review because that's going to appear in search results and that is part of the searcher's experience, which is actually what I'm optimizing for. It's more than just rankings. It's about optimizing for the experience of the searcher. Last tip, this is one that I think, it, this is the type of analysis that you can only do in Google. There is no way to do this that I know of outside of Google. So if you created a page, this is a client, they created a page for this topic. It is, uh, this is a, uh, I'm looking at the phrases, this is not a client. This is a, this is a list of phrases for which this company ranks for. And it includes this phrase, medical fitness management. Okay, medical fitness management. And, uh, but what about fitness center management? Is that a different key phrase or is that the same key phrase? This is a simple shortcut. I do this all the time. I'm not sure if other people do it all the time and I'm not sure that I've ever seen it taught as such. But the, uh, but the question here is, is that one key phrase or two? If it's one key phrase, then we should be incorporating the semantic SEO 
re semantically related phrases, you know, the, the subtopics, the related questions on the same page because it's one key phrase. If it's two key phrases, we should have two competitors. Every key phrase is a competition. Every page is a competitor. We should have two pages targeting these two different key phrases. So how do you know that? It's a little tiny screencast video. I'm just going to search for medical fitness management. I'm going to see what ranks. Do they rank? This, this company actually ranks for that. I'm scrolling down. I'm looking at the SERP features. I'm, ima I'm imagining what the click-through rate is. There it is. So now I'm going to do, in another browser, side by side, scooch them over. I can see them together. And I'm going to search for the other key phrase. What was it, like fitness center management? This is the only way, when you appear in a search result, this is your method for trying to understand if this is a second key phrase. Do, are there different listings, different rankings, different SERP features? Does one have video? Is there any overlap? If there's no overlap, you found an opportunity. You can target that, that phrase. You can make a page or a video or submit somewhere to, to target that key phrase. That is the game. There is no way to do that kind of analysis unless you are in Google.com. Again, Google is the ultimate keyword research tool. You have not finished researching a key phrase unless you've done the search, looked closely at the SERP, analyzed what ranks, see what the opportunities are, and then go fought that battle on those terms, right? By the way, they, uh, this is a great use for Google Trends is to put in two different key phrases and see there. I think Google Trends is sort of worthless for a single phrase. You have to, it's, meant, it's best when used to evaluate multiple phrases so you can kind of tell. And that's a phrase for which they have competition or for which they have a, a fighting chance. So bottom line, I used to be an SEO who cared a lot about rankings. 20 years, right? I did SEO when it was Alta Vista and Excite and Lycos and Hotbot. Those were weird times. But I, I used to care a lot about rankings, and I still do, right? But, it's, but then I realized it's not just about rankings. Click-through rate's a factor. It's actually also about traffic. It, I, ranking is not anything unless there's a click-through rate because then I need traffic. But then finally come to realize it's not really just about traffic either. It's about visibility. Not all key, not all, it's, think of it this way, not all visibility is ranking, and not all ranking is visibility. Your job as an SEO is to become, is to make the brand visible, is to make the content visible, is to help the company become, increase awareness, right, for that brand, even if that awareness does not create traffic on your domain. And by the way, ranking on your domain doesn't necessarily create visibility at all. Eventually, we come to conclude right, that you can actually rank super high for a key phrase, but ranking number one is 1,800 pixels from the top of the viewport, and the click-through rate is, is, is close to zero. Okay, guys, that's what I had for you. I am really excited for all of you here. You are at one of the great events in our industry. This is a beautiful, beautiful town, and it's a it, it's such a, so much love in this, in this place with these people. And again, I highly recommend that you don't miss this opportunity to make stuff with each other. Make stuff with each other. That's the beauty of the event, right? It's to come together and make new friends, keep in touch, and then collaborate on stuff, right? Write for each other. Get contributor quotes from each other. Make videos together, guys. This is the community. Feel the love. Work together. Make something. That's why marketing's fun, right? Let's go do great stuff. Okay, thanks again, MozCon. Love you all. I hope this is helpful. Have a great, great show.